And now, Joe Bob Summer School and Ice Cream Man on TNT. And so ends Willy Wonka with Charlie accepting the keys to the Chocolate Kingdom. I should point out that that wasn't originally how the film was supposed to end. The last line of the script was actually, yippee! <laughs> But Mel Stewart, the director, didn't think that was good enough, so he held everybody on the set in Germany, and he called the writer, David Seltzer, at a bar in Maine, and he told him that he had one minute to write a final line that summed up the whole picture. So Seltzer comes back to the phone a minute later, and he gives him what has become one of the most famous ending lines in film. But Charlie, don't forget what happened to the man who suddenly got everything he always wanted. What happened? He lived happily ever after. So... <laughs> All right, we're back out in the trailer, I mean lecture hall, and uh, <laughs> that movie was kind of a change of pace for us. For those diehards who've been thinking there's something wrong with their cable, hang around for a couple minutes here, because we have guest lecturer Clint Howard joining us to talk about all his excellent movie roles, including the one in our next flick where he plays the nice man in the white coat who drives the ice cream truck and sometimes makes special flavors out of the body parts of murdered children. Is this sick or what? This is sick. Of course, that's why we love it. But before he joins us, I want to remind you that next week is the last week of Joe Bob's Summer School. It's Recreational Geography 207, and we'll be watching National Lampoon's European Vacation and The Great Outdoors. And we'll be joined by producer Maddie Simmons, who was one of the creators of the uh, National Lampoon, and travel expert, are you ready for this? Robin Leach is going to be here next week. And then the week after that, yes, the rumors are true. We're moving out to L.A. for good. So we're going Hollywood, and our very first show is something extra special. I'll tell you about it later. Okay, we're still studying food science here, so let's continue the lesson with the world television premiere of Ice Cream Man. It's that old tale of the neighborhood ice cream man whose goodies include all kinds of yummy things like cockroaches, mice, and eyeballs from previous customers. Let me put it this way, don't order the Rocky Road. Clint Howard usually plays wackos, but this is definitely one of his wackoist roles, so let's do the drive-in totals. We have seven dead bodies, one dead dog, eyeball chewing, Waffle iron to the face, head on a cone, heads on ice cream scoops, ice pick through the mouth, kung fu, and the special effects in this thing are surprisingly decent. I give it three and a half stars. It's also one of the shortest movies we've ever shown, so if you don't like it, it'll be over before you know it. So, roll the film, and don't forget that the ice cream man himself, Clint Howard, will be here in just a few minutes. Clint also happens to be Ron Howard's little brother, and he's in all of Ron's movies, which means he's experienced the full range of on-set catering. He goes from beanie weenies to caviar and back to beanie weenies. So <laughs> let me tell you, if I had to put up with caviar, I'd be throwing some major hissy fits, though. So is Clint in the house? I think he's in the house. Clint! 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 Clint's in the house! <laughs> Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Ice Cream Man on TNT. This movie has quite the all-star cast. So far, we've got ex-first baseman Steve Garvey, uh, David Naughton, the Dr. Pepper guy. Remember him? I'm a pepper, you're a pepper, he's a pepper, she's a pepper, <laughs> whatever. And uh, we'll talk about all of them later because we've got the star of the film right here. His work covers both the B-movie arena and big-budget extravaganzas. He started working when he was two years old. He starred in the TV series Gentle Ben when he was seven years old. He's one of our favorites around here. Actor, all-around great guy, Clint Howard. Come on out here, Clint. Hey. Welcome to Joe Bob's Summer School, Clint. Good to hey, see you. Yeah, good, good to be here. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of ice cream on the set while you were making this flick, right? Well, not really, Joe Bob. We had mashed potatoes more than ice cream. Really? <laughs> well, the, the ice cream would melt. Yeah. So the prop department, well, the prop department, there was one guy. Prop yeah. <laughs> um, he figured out that, that mashed potatoes, the instant kind, you mix them up, you, you, you make it, you stick it on the cone, and, and the ice cream's good for days. Really? Not did, very tasty. Did people have to lick it and eat it? Um, you, well, we did have some hero ice cream. When we actually had the actual, you know, eating shots, there was hero ice cream, but just the, the handling was all mashed potatoes. Okay. So you're the crazy ice cream man who witnessed his own ice cream man's death, 
What and do you mean crazy? <laughs> <laughs> and you ended, you do that so well. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, what my wife says. <laughs> <laughs> And you ended up in a mental institution, and now uh, you add cockroaches to the butter brickle. And uh, let me ask you something. How do you prepare for a role like that? Or maybe you don't have to prepare at all. <laughs> well, you don't eat a lot of ice cream off the ice cream truck, that's for sure. Uh, no, you know, th there's a crazy part of me that's right there. We've seen it many times. Yes. <laughs> and it doesn't take too much for me to bring it out. And in fact... Really, my only preparation for this gig was the director, Norman, wanted me to have a, a, a gravelly voice. So as I was driving to work, I would roll the windows up and scream at the top of my lungs for the 20 minutes that it took for me to get to the location. So by the time I got to the location, I was talking like that, and I couldn't help it. So you on the freeways of L.A. screaming? Like, like everybody else. <laughs> I know that, I, I hear that you're known for doing something pretty wacky on the way home from work, too. <laughs> what, did, what did you do? Well, it actually started with a horror movie that I worked on back in 1980 called Evil Speak. And I love I, Evil, Speak. Evil Speak. One of my favorites. I want to ask you about that later. Yeah, Evil what, Speak was a good movie. A very good movie. Um, but anyway, I, I had the bloody clothes from Evil Speak, and I, they just looked too cool. <laughs> so... I told the wardrobe woman, Lynn, I said, Lynn, I'm taking these home with me. I got to show them to my buddies. <laughs> so in the full-on bloody costume and the full-on blood from the, the third act finale of Evil Speak, I drive home on the freeway. And I'm only expecting to entertain my friends. I didn't realize it. I didn't think that I was going to entertain all the people that I was passing on the freeway. <laughs> See, because as I'm driving along, these people are looking at me. And, and in fact, on the ice cream man, and I did the same thing. It's kind of a tradition, a Clint Howard tradition. Uh, I'm driving home, and I'm just getting ready to pull off the off-ramp in Burbank. You know, it's where I live, a very humble little town. And I pull next to this minivan filled with kids. And the, the, the mother, the woman driving, she kind of glances over her shoulder and sees me. Now, you know, I'm in that white costume, all bloody, and she absolutely freaked. She sprung to her feet from the driver's side of the minivan. She, she bolted across to the, to the passenger door and locked the door and, <laughs> and gave me this kind of, like, not dirty look, but kind of like, don't come close to my children. So, you know, it, it's fun. It's entertaining for oh, me. Oh, it's a barrel of laughs, Clint. I wish I'd been there. Maybe that answers my next question, which is, why do you think you get cast to play so many wackos? <laughs> I don't know, Joe Bob. <laughs> oh, just, I don't know. It's just something I can do. Well, it's like your, your brother gets, gets uh, cast to play the most white bread characters in the history of the world, yeah. and you get cast to play the opposite. Well, I'll tell you what. George went put it really well. We worked on Gung Ho together, George yeah. and I. And George looked at me one, one day and said, you're the brother from another planet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's get back to the world television premiere of Ice Cream Man, starring our guest, Clint Howard. Roll it. So in other words, you screamed for ice cream, right? Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for the ice cream man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they didn't have that in the movie. <laughs> Think you're funnier than Joe Bob? Who isn't, right? But can you prove it? Then enter the Monster Vision Caption Contest and try to make the six-headed jury laugh. And no, I'm not one of the heads. What do you win if you slay them with your caption? How about this incredibly collectible t-shirt? To play, go to tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision and look for the Caption Contest link. And may the best man, woman, or mutant win. Everyone's eligible. Oh, except Joe Bob. We've heard enough from him, don't you think? Play the Monster Caption Contest and win a free T-shirt at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Ice Cream Man on TNT. There are no bad days, Gregory. Only happy, happy, happy days. Did I do that right, Clint? Yeah, that's pretty good, Joe Bob. <laughs> Clint Howard, star of Ice Cream Man, is our guest lecturer tonight. And by the way, one of my favorite Clint Howard roles is in a movie we showed here last summer school, The Wraith. Oh, in fact, yeah. you have my favorite line in the movie. You oh. know which line I'm talking about? 
it's got to be, uh, it's an evil spirit, man, and it ain't cool. <laughs> Actually, no, that's a good line, but that's, that's not the line I was thinking of. The line I was thinking of is, you lose the race, you, you lose, lose your car. <laughs> Agreed? <laughs> oh, what was your very first acting job? Uh, okay, I was two years old, 1961, an episode of The Andy Griffith Show. I played a character called Leon. Yeah? Yeah. Were you related to your brother? Or... No, 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 I was just a, I was a tenor. You know why? Because that would be unbelievable that the two of you were related. <laughs> Thanks, Joe Bob. <laughs> um, no, I was just a townsperson, and it was really by coincidence. I happened to be on the set being babysat that day. Mom would normally not be with Ron. Mom was normally home with me. But my dad had a, an acting job somewhere, and, and so Mom had to watch Ron, and I came along, and the director saw me on the set and said, oh, that's too cute, because I, I would wear my little cowboy outfit. You know, I would play in my little cowboy outfit, and they basically just picked me up and put me in a sequence. And I did a little bit with Barney where I hold up a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and he goes, not now, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> and, and from there, I did five episodes, five or six episodes of The Andrew Griffith Show, and, and by that time, I was three, and I had an agent, and I started wheeling and dealing in show business. Really? You had an agent at the age of three? Oh, yeah. Marguerite Ogg was her name. <laughs> Marguerite. Yeah. So how do you account for both you and your brother Ron being among the few former child stars who didn't turn out to be like major burnout drug addicts? That always happens to child stars. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, there's a simple answer to that, and that's mom and dad. They are such... Close-knit family. Yeah, and they are just people of the earth, down-to-earth, regular, regular people. I mean, my dad is a, is a farm boy, and my mom is the daughter of a butcher. Ooh. The daughter of a butcher. Yeah, uh, that does explain a lot about you. Yeah, no, but you know what? They, they they did and they still do bring a sensibility to life, and especially early on when Ron and I were were in the business and impressionable. Um, they just, you know, they they grounded us with the simple fact that that what we do is a job. Our friends had jobs, paper routes. I had a buddy who worked at his parents' restaurant, and and it was the same thing. You know, and just because we, we were in the public eye a little bit more than the guy delivering the papers, it was the same. So, you know, my dad, and still does, stresses, it's all about the work. Yeah? Yeah. Does Ron really dig these really quirky, weird movies that you do? Yeah. Uh, y yes, he does. I'll tell you, you know, he makes big studio, high-budget movies now. And God love him for it because he hires me and he pays me. <laughs> He pays me really well. <laughs> um, but, but when I do work on something, like the Ice Cream Man, or I'm, I'm working on a little tiny uh, family comedy right now called Ping, um, that, that he calls me and he wants all the gory details about how low a budget can be. Really? Oh, yeah. Because, you know, we can shoot a movie for what it costs them to feed the crew for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So he really enjoys hearing... Not necessarily about how the quality of the movie is, but how the director's actually getting the shots and getting the day's work done. So, and he applies this somehow to his own work, or no, he's just interested? No, he's just interested, you know, because his, his first movie was a Roger Corman movie. His first directing job Eat was... Eat My Dust, no, right? No, he acted Grand in... Grand Theft Auto. Yes, he acted in Eat My Dust to get to direct Grand Theft Auto for I Roger. See. And Roger told him... Ron, if you do a good job for me, you'll never have to work for me again. Yeah. And That's Roger's I, philosophy. Roger yeah. thinks that if you make more than two movies for him, you're probably no good. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, the ice cream man has kidnapped small Paul, so let's get back to the movie. And Cooper Smith, we have to talk about the role you did that's even creepier than this one, because Cooper Smith in Evil Speak. we got to talk about that. Uh, I love Cooper Smith. Joe Bob, I saw this movie in 1984, and it had a girl in it, and she's sitting by this tree. What movie was that? People, we have got to have more information than that when you're submitting something for the Find That Flick contest. Now, normally, if you give me a plot description, I will know the title of the movie you're trying to remember. But if I can't answer it, hundreds of my fellow drive-in mutants can, because I got fans that watch 32 movies a day. They never leave their apartments. So to find out how to play and all the free junk you can win, visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision and look for the Find That Flick contest. Joe Bob, I saw this movie with a talking bear in it and Morgan Fairchild naked. 
See, that's a description I can work with. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Ice Cream Man on TNT. The old hide in the bottom of the shopping cart trick. The ice cream man can be a little bit blind in some of these scenes, <laughs> Kenny. Well, you know, plot point, plot point. <laughs> Sandal Bergman as the mom who makes her kid do the grocery shopping. David Warner as the out-to-lunch preacher. Jan Michael Vincent and Lee Majors II as the incompetent cops. Great cast for o such a low-budget movie. Olivia Hussey. Olivia Hussey. Juliet. Man, she did that was that was my favorite. I was really looking forward to meeting with and working with Olivia Hussey. All right, well, we're here with the star of the film, Clint Howard, the ice cream man himself. And Clint, did I hear something about this movie being financed by porno? Porno money. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's public record now. Uh, I, I, you know, I wasn't there to watch the checks get signed and everything, but but my understanding was it, it was it was. Uh, made by people that that made and distributed uh, blue movies. Okay, well, <laughs> it, it it happens, and it, it has a little of that quality about it, you know, which can help sometimes. <laughs> if you look real close in some of the background shots and some of the very bit players, and if you're a, a fan of of the pornographic film industry, you will see some <laughs> characters in there that you will recognize. Oh, really? Yeah. Makes it all the more interesting. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, you won't recognize them with their clothes on, though, probably, will you? Exactly. <laughs> what do you think about the final version of the film, personally? Well, you know, we, we did not set out to make Dr. Zhivago. You know? No. We, were, we had our, our tongue firmly planted in our cheek when we made the thing. It's got some flaws, but you know what works pretty well. And I'll tell you what, even to this day, it's been, what, six or seven years now? I still, I was in a Taco Bell the other day, and, and this, this kid, about 25 years old, he's serving me tacos, you know, he looks at me in the eye and he goes, you're the ice cream man. <laughs> you know, now, I don't get it a lot. Yeah. But it's amazing how, you know, the picture sticks. Okay, the occasional taco guy. But the, the, <laughs> the, the picture's kind of a big mess, you know, yeah. a, a big, big mess of butter brickle. And uh, yeah. is, is butter brickle a real flavor? That, that was, no, that was created for the movie. Yeah, right? I think somehow Norman, the director, got it in his mind. I don't know, maybe it's some sexual thing, butter, okay. butter brickle. But I heard this movie killed at the Clint Howard Film Festival in Chicago, though. They had a Clint Howard Film Festival, yes, right? Yes, yes. A couple years ago, there was the first annual Clint Howard Film Festival, and they're waiting for the second Clint Howard Film Festival if they, if they never get me to get there, you know. Uh, but we showed Rock and Roll High School, Evil Speak, and had the world premiere on a big movie theater screen of Ice Cream Man, and the crowd loved it. Now, now, giving away free beer <laughs> probably didn't hurt. Okay. They handed, every, they handed everybody a plastic cup, and, and they came in and they had an open keg situation, and by the time they showed Ice Cream Man, everybody was just three sheets to the wind. <laughs> and they loved Ice Cream Man. Well, you know, I know that the reason they would have a Clint Howard Film Festival has a lot to do with the work you did for the legendary B-movie producer Roger Corman, who we mentioned before, because you've made, I believe, 13 movies for Roger, yeah. including, you mentioned Rock and Roll High School, Carnosaur, you were in that, uh, the two movies that your brother did, uh, Eat My Dust and Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. I was uh, in one of his one art house films, I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. Really? Kathleen Quinlan got nominated for an Academy Award on a Roger Corman movie. Well, what was it like working out of the uh, infamous Corman Studios? Oh, boy. Well, how can I describe it? Well, I'll tell you, they have a little soundstage down in Venice, California, where... It's actually a lumber yard. It's, it, it, it has a tin <laughs> roof. Yeah. Now, you know a little bit about the movie business. You just don't film in a tin roof, because when it rains, it sounds like you're getting shot at. <laughs> um, you know, I, I enjoy it. I like making guerrilla movies. And Roger is the quintessential guerrilla filmmaker. And uh, I personally have continued to, to act in him. First of all, you know, he pays. The check's always clear. And to me, there's always kind of an exciting gamble about quite possibly working for the next Martin Scorsese. Or Francis right. Coppola. Yeah, because a lot of great directors have come out of the Roger Corman yeah. film factory. Yes, and, and I've, I've worked for, what, 10 or 12 different directors. 
Uh, and not one of them outside of Ron has really graduated, but they're all kind of working their way up in the business, and maybe they'll remember old Clint Aru when it comes time to, you know, make a big studio picture. Okay. Well, we're going back to the movie, and uh, we'll talk more at the next break. So when are you going to start directing? You could just go over to Roger and say, I want to direct, Roger. You know, I, I could, but... I love to play golf, and I love to take naps. <laughs> and, and when you're a director, golfing and napping is definitely out. Okay. I don't know, maybe someday. All right, well, and we still haven't discussed Cooper Smith. Don't let me forget that. One of the best pig stampedes ever filmed. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Ice Cream Man on TNT. This movie may set the world record for flashbacks. We've had about 19 <laughs> flashback sequences in this flick so far. And the illusions of this movie are subtle but profound, like the Pied Piper and the Boy Who Cried Wolf. And I believe there are references to Milton's Paradise Lost in this movie. Are there not, Clint? Well, yeah, and there's also, there's also me going, every day is not a happy, happy, happy day. That's right. Yeah. You do that many times. Clint Howard is here with us. So tell us what you're working on now, Clint. You're doing two movies, one big budget movie and one little budget movie, right? Yep, yep. Uh, I am currently filming a, a little family comedy called Ping. Uh, it's a dog. It's kind of like Home Alone, but instead of, in, instead of a boy, instead of Macaulay Culkin, it's a little kind of half chihuahua running around. The chihuahua's the star? Yeah, well, Judge Reinhold and I hopefully get credit above the star, <laughs> with, above, above Ping, but it's Judge Reinhold and, and I and Shirley Jones and this little dog. And uh, that's, we're do, I'm shooting that as we speak, virtually. And then in a few weeks, I'm going to start to work on Ron's next movie, which is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Oh. Great. Jim Carrey playing the Grinch. Yeah. Wild and woolly. It should be pretty wild. I'm going to have two to two and a half hours in the makeup chair every day being made up to look Are like. Are you the Grinch? No, no, no. I'm a, I'm a citizen of Whoville. I am the mayor's sycophant. My name is Hubris. Okay, <laughs> that will be fun. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize what hard work it is making a horror flick, you know? Because, I mean, what was it like making Evil Speak, for example? Because just, just in that flick alone, you had heads twisted around until they're backwards. You had naked girls attacked by maniac pigs. You had this guy who gets impaled on a torture rack, nails that fly out of a cross and kill the chaplain by popping open his brain, guy who gets sliced all the way down the middle with a broadsword, a lot of hacked off heads, a man who gets his heart ripped out of his chest while it's still beating, a lot of other stuff that I can't even mention on TNT, right? So you can tell I've seen the film, right, Clint? God, so that was a good picture. <laughs> uh, you know, those things are all really fun to do. That's the bonus time. You know, usually the, the, just the day-to-day -day grind, the schedule. I had a 22-hour day on the set of Evil Speak, which is, you know, you do something for 22 hours unless it's making love. It's, you know, it, it's, it's difficult. Even making love for 22 hours would be pretty difficult. What's the grossest way you've ever died in, on screen? Oh, boy. Because we got fans who live for that kind of stuff. You don't want to meet the fans, but we got them. Um, well, I got sliced up, like I got gutted, in a movie called Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 4, and then these big cockroach larvae, these big things about yay big, started kind of climbing in and out of me, and, and, and so the, I think the cockroach larva kind of did me in. Also, in Ticks was pretty classic. Oh, being ticks, infested, we've had that on the show, yeah. Be, being infested by a tick the size of a softball and having it explode out the side of my face, that's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of an interesting way to go. That's a good, you don't really get to do that in Ron's movies, do you? No, no, a guy, you know, I don't think I've ever died in one of Ron's pictures. I'll have to talk to him about that. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the kitty horror comedy Ice Cream Man. Roll it. I've, I've always been wary about ice cream men myself. You know, it's a brilliant idea for a horror movie because some strange guy drives around neighborhoods in a beat-up old van with that crazy tinkling song. Yeah. And, and the moms... freezer. You could easily jam a couple of kids in the freezer. Exactly. Yeah. And the moms just go out there and hand the money over. Sure, sonny, you just run out there. Yeah. Do they have ice cream? They don't have ice cream man licenses or anything, do they? <laughs> and just the music yeah. is creepy. Yeah. That should be a tip well, off. Well, there right? you go. We had the crustiest little ice cream man when he must have been about 80 years old. His name was Marty. Marty the Ice Cream Man in my neighborhood growing up. 
and the kids used to jump on the back of the ice cream truck, you know, and drive along, and Marty would stop and get out, and the kids would run away, and he, <laughs> he would curse at the kids, and the, the kids would curse at Marty. It was, you know, a fun-filled neighborhood. So you had some research to work with on this role. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Okay, you screwed up again, didn't you? It's your fifth year in junior college. Your life has no possibility of improving. Not true if you attend yet another session of Joe Bob's Summer School, nine brain-expanding Saturday nights good for actual credit at Southern Arizona State Community College at Ajo. But you need to enroll your hiney. To register, you got to go to the summer school website and get a syllabus. Plus, you'll be able to see who some of our guest lecturers are this summer. And you'll also get a sneak peek at a few of the final exam questions. And you can even include yourself in our summer yearbook, listing your worst subject and favorite hobbies. The internet address for Joe Bob's Summer School is tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. That doesn't mean you can skip the dying class. Of course, even academic probation is fun at Joe Bob Summer School Saturday nights on Turner National Technical Institute. Visit Joe Bob Summer School at tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Ice Cream Man on TNT. You killed David Naughton. You killed the Dr. Pepper guy and served his head in a waffle cone. Yeah? I mean, he had it coming to him, you know, ever since that song, Making It, from the late 70s. Remember that song he did? <laughs> I play golf with da David quite oh, okay. often. He's a really nice guy, and, and I think he looks at me kind of fun, funny when we're, you know, out there playing because of the ice cream man. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Clint Howard is here with us, and, you know, I think that David Naughton, that, that David Naughton head, is pretty realistic. In fact, I think it's better than all the heads that, that they used in Total Recall. I mean, that was like a billion dollar flick. Yeah. So, what was it like working with the heads? There are several heads that you had to use in this picture. Yeah, uh, the, 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 the guy, guy, I can't think of his name. He was, a, he was a nice young guy. Just one guy made all the heads and he took great pride in his work and the heads turned out great. The problem that we had, low budget movie, we only had one copy of each head. So we had to treat the heads like they were gold. In these big studio <laughs> movies, you can just kind of, you know, they, they've got replacement heads. And in Ice Cream Man, we had, you know, one head, and if you dropped it, it was like, <laughs> oh, jeez, there, there, goes, there goes our head. Uh, um, so th there, there, is th th there were times when I had to handle the heads, and I had to throw the heads and stuff, and, and, and this, this poor guy was standing off camera. The guy who made the heads? Yeah, oh, of course. He didn't have any help. I mean, he was catching the heads as I was throwing them <laughs> off camera. And of course, I'm fairly athletic and I can pretty much throw the head where I want it to go. Yeah, pretty, pretty. Okay, so you could keep that going in your mind while you were acting is like, make sure to get the head to the guy. Yeah, but you know what? I also was kind of playing with them. I'd throw one kind of low and away. And <laughs> <laughs> I threw one kind of up and out. And, uh, you know, he was like having to do the catching thing, you know. <laughs> hey, well, uh, well. <laughs> okay, Clint. Clint, we have a gift for you. All our guest lecturers on Joe Bob Summer School get a book. And since tonight is Food Science 201, and since you live in California, we got you this one. It's a restaurant guide to L.A. Now, uh, it's, it's 11 years old. <laughs> but I'm sure some of the restaurants are still open. Yeah. So. Well, thank you. Th thanks. thanks. I, will, I will treasure this for minutes. Okay. <laughs> thanks for being here, Clint. And uh, hope to... Come back, get, come back again sometime. We got, we got many of your movies on this show. Uh, I would love to come back, Joe Bob, and, and, and thanks, class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time for the chilling conclusion to Ice Cream Man. Roll it. Do you like what I just said there? Chilling. Chilling? Chilling conclusion. Chilling? Chilling? Well, it's not an English picture. It's chilling. <laughs> chilling <laughs> conclusion. That's what I said, Clint. Chilling, and it's ice cream. And I do stuff a guy in a freezer, so you could consider it a chilling ending. That was the point. Yeah, well, you did it. You nailed it. And I'm going to go home and read my book. <laughs> Who is this guy? Is he still alive? <laughs> Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Ice Cream Man on TNT. Ah, uh, did you?
Did you notice the scene where the ice cream man jumps off the truck and knocks out both cops with two ice cream scoops? I don't think so. Man, was that movie a mess or what? Half the time I couldn't tell what was going on. But I'd like to thank tonight's guest lecturers, Wolfgang Puck and Clint Howard, the ice cream man himself, and remind you that next week's class here at Joe Bob's Summer School, our last class of Joe Bob's Summer School, is Recreational Geography 207. We'll be watching National Lampoon's European Vacation and the John Candy, Dan Aykroyd comedy, The Great Outdoors. And our guest lecturers will be producer and National Lampoon creator, Maddie Simmons, and of course, travel expert, Robin Leach. That's it for me, Professor Joe Bob, reminding you, in the words of Willy Wonka, candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker. <laughs> Did you guys hear the one about the guy who's broke and he's stuck in an unhappy marriage? And he decides to solve both problems by taking out a large insurance policy on his wife with himself as the beneficiary and arranging to have her killed. So a friend of a friend puts him in touch with an underworld figure who goes by the name of Artie. And Artie explains to the guy that... Uh, his going price for snuffing out a spouse is $5,000. Well, the guy says he's willing to pay that amount, but uh, he won't have any cash on hand until he can collect his wife's insurance money. So Artie insists on being paid something up front. So the man opens up his wallet, and he shows the hitman a $1 bill. And um, Artie sighs, and he rolls his eyes, and he agrees to accept the dollar as a down payment on the hit. So a few days later, Artie follows the man's wife to the local Safeway grocery store, and there he surprises her in the produce department, and he proceeds to strangle her with his gloved hands. And as the poor woman draws her last breath and slumps to the floor, the manager of the produce department stumbles onto the scene, and Artie has no choice but to strangle the produce manager as well. But unknown to Artie, the entire thing is captured by hidden cameras and observed by the store's security guard, who immediately calls the police. Artie is caught and he's arrested before he can leave the store. And after intense questioning at the police station, Artie reveals the whole plan, including his financial arrangements with the husband, which is why the next day in the newspaper, the headline says, Artie chokes two for a dollar at Safeway. <laughs> Long way to go for that joke, wasn't it? <laughs> Joe Bob Briggs reminding you that the drive-in will never die. Two cannibals meet one day. Cannibal joke. <laughs> first cannibal says, you know, I just can't seem to get a tender missionary. I've baked them, I've roasted them, I've stewed them, I've barbecued them, I've tried every sort of marinade. I just cannot seem to get them tender. And the second cannibal says, well, what kind of missionary do you use? And the other one says, well, you know, the ones that hang out at that place at the bend of the river. You know, they have those brown cloaks on, rope around the waist, and they're sort of bald on top with a funny ring of hair on their heads. And the second cannibal says, no wonder, those are friars. <laughs> What do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. You knew that one.